I started uploading videos on this YouTube channel more than two years ago as a hobby, but I had no clue that I would ever reach 1,000 subscribers. But here we are, hundreds of thousands of views and over 40 videos later. This channel is full of some of the biggest projects I ever undertook in my life, especially Dinosaurs and Creationism Debunked, which is almost an hour long. Along the way, we've tackled creationists, cryptozoology, ancient aliens, homophobia, quantum physics, mythical creatures, dinosaurs, superheroes, and even Ben Carson. So thank you, all my loyal subscribers who have been watching my videos. I promise to continue uploading even if it's only once in a while since I'm trying to balance it with school. So following YouTube tradition, I'm supposed to do a special of some type. Well, as a lover of animals, I figured I'd do a video on my favorite group of animals, the bovines, one of which is the bison. If you didn't know by now, I love bison. American bison, European bison, the buffalo, related to bison, sky bison, you name it. Okay, I'm getting a bit ahead of myself here. I haven't even explained to you all the bovines that exist in the world today. I think it's about time you learned. Here is the bison family explained. Alright, so let's get the boring stuff out of the way first. Bisons are part of a subfamily called the bovines, which are, wait for it, any mammals with a placenta, an even number of toes, a fermenting digestive system, and keratin, which graze, chew cud, and are very social. You don't need to know any of that. But because this is a special video, and we're talking about my favorite group of animals in the world, this video will be longer than the ones I usually make. So three things before we start our journey. One, a lot of the bison family, as you're going to notice, looks nothing like the bison. But don't worry, I assure you that they're all related. Two, we don't want to dwell on the past or the dead, so I'm going to avoid talking about the extinct relatives of the bison, with only a few mentions here and there. Three, not all of you viewers are science nerds, I get it. So I'm going to try and avoid using big fancy scientific names. So when I go through groups of animals, I like to think of them as a simple, big, dysfunctional family. And what would a dysfunctional family be without that weird old uncle? For the bison, that's the saola, which is sometimes called the Asian unicorn. Saolas, which live in the rainforest of Laos and Vietnam, are actually critically endangered and thus are extremely rare. They're also the last of their genus, and the most distant member of the bison family in relation to bison. Now, before we move on, I'm going to shock you a bit. The saola is not a deer. It's closer to the bison than it is to deer. Saolas are antelopes, which are not deer. The big difference between antelopes and deer is that antelopes have horns while deer have antlers. Oh, now you're asking, okay, Justin, what's the difference between horns and antlers? Well, horns are extensions of the bony skull surrounded by keratin, the protein that makes up your fingernails and your hair. Antlers, on the other hand, are just exposed bone and thus need to be shed periodically. Both grow, but horns will never stop growing, whereas antlers grow back annually once they are shed. So now that you know about antelopes and how they're different from deer, we can move on to a weird pair of animals. This pair of cousins are the Tristinga, aka the four-horned antelope, because it is an antelope with, you guessed it, four horns, and the Nilgai, aka the blue bull. Both of these weird cousins used to have tons of siblings, and their parents were very successful. However, almost all of their close relatives went extinct in prehistoric times, leaving behind these two survivors, which now live in southern Asia, clustering around India. Now we're going to talk about the spiral horned antelopes, which are so aptly named because their horns are, you guessed it, shaped like spirals. The spiraled horned antelopes can be divided into two groups, the elands and everyone else. Elands are the largest antelopes in the world, but this also makes them the slowest. There are common elands and giant elands too, but that's getting a little too specific. The half-siblings of the elands are the other spiral horned antelopes, which contain the bongos, no, not those bongos. That's better. Inyalas. Imbabalas, better known in the West as bushbucks. And the sitatunga. This is a very diverse group, and there aren't too many general statements I can make about them. For example, bongos are diurnal and are absolutely massive, while the imbabala is small and diurnal. Another thing that you might notice if you look up these animals is that the spiral horned antelopes are African while the saola and others are Asian. This is because sometime during the divergence between these two groups around 12 million years ago during the Miocene Epoch, 
bovines had already spread far beyond their origins in Asia. So these are the diverse African antelope relatives of the bison. Now back to Asia. We're going to get to a group of animals that you probably associate with bison. The buffalo. Buffalo are not bison. I repeat, no matter what Americans tell you, buffalo are not bison. In America, buffalo and bison are generally used to describe the American bison, but buffalo clearly look very different as you're going to see and are found in Asia and Africa. Buffalo in Asia can be divided into two groups, the midget buffalo, aka the anoas, and the famous water buffalo of Southeast Asia. I can't talk about bovines without mentioning the tamarao, a small critically endangered water buffalo native to the Philippines. Water buffaloes are, for the most part, domesticated across Asia, and this deserves a video on its own since water buffalo played a crucial role in Asian history. If you've noticed, I keep saying Asian water buffalo, Asian buffalo, or just water buffalo instead of generally saying buffalo. This is because there's still one more buffalo that exists, and it's something out of a comic book or a video game or mythology because nobody is 100% sure what its origins are. Despite this, it's a feared animal and is the definition of a badass. I'm talking about the Cape Buffalo, aka the African Buffalo, one of the strongest and most aggressive animals in the world. Now, even though Cape Buffalo for the most part are smaller than bison, they are deadlier and do not, I repeat, do not attempt to run if one of them is charging at you. You cannot outrun it. Do not try to scare it or call for help. It will kill you before you do anything. Basically, if you ever see one of these coming towards you, you're screwed. I'm kidding. I'll probably leave a link explaining what to do in a card or in the description or something. There are four more bovids that are at least partially domesticated, all of which started in Western or Southern Asia. The first of these is the cow, which you should know, hopefully. If you don't know what a cow is, then you should probably stop watching YouTube videos and get out some more. The other three are the banteng, the yak which tastes a lot like beef and is actually much healthier, and the gayal, the, the wild form of which is called the gar. Gars are actually the largest bovids in the world, which can weigh up to one metric ton. These species are all very close to bison genetically and are just about the closest you can get to bison without having, well, an actual bison. Alright, we're finally here. We're finally going to get to the last members of the bison family, the bison. Now, believe it or not, there are two living species of bison. The first of these is the European bison, which are known in Europe as vicents. Vicents are also called wood bison because unlike the American bison, which are always associated with the Great Plains, vicents are primarily found in forests, where they only really have to worry about three predators, bears, wolves, and humans. As for the American bison, the one we all know and love, there's not much I can really add. Bison were nearly extinct at the dawn of the 20th century, but thanks to the National Park Service and other preservation and conservation methods, we have a decent bison population in the national parks. It has even been declared America's national mammal. Usually in April or May. And now for our news hour share, something that caught our eye that we thought might be of interest to you too. The American bison is poised to become the first national mammal of the United States, thanks to a bipartisan act of Congress. H.R. 2908. The Senate passed the National Bison, bison Legacy mammal, Act United by United unanimous Senator consent Donald last Donald evening, Reagan following the House's Reagan approval Reagan Tuesday. Reagan. The act will designate bison, also known as buffalo, as a national emblem in honor of their historical and contemporary significance. So there you have it, a relatively fast and brief rundown of the bison's closest relatives. So let's review. The most distant bovids from bison are species of antelope, specifically the saola, chosinga, and nilgai. Getting closer is a group of animals sometimes called the spiral-horned antelopes, the most important of which are the eland, bongo, and kudu. The buffalo can be divided into three groups, the soul cape buffalo, water buffalo, and the anoas. The cow, gayal, banteng, and yak have all been at least partially domesticated. And there are two living species of actual bison, the American bison and the vicent. 
Once again, thank you guys for the 1,000 subs. I promise to continue uploading videos such as this one. Please don't forget to comment suggestions for videos or message me, and I promise that when I find the time to do research and scripting and recording and all that fun stuff, I'll upload. But no matter what happens, don't forget that there's always something to learn about in the world. So don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe, and most importantly, don't forget to keep learning. As always, thanks for watching.